Alright, here we go. It's the end of June. It's really, really hot side, and that means it's the end of another season of anime. Spring 2022 was a really good season, but I'm not gonna lie, it fell off hard towards the end. I picked up a lot of shows to watch this season, so here we go. I'm gonna rank all the prominent anime that aired in spring this year. But before all the pitchforks come out, yes, I have not included season 2 of Nintendo 3DS graphics or the fourth season of Data Live because I don't know who the hell watches that trash. With that out of the way, let's strap in as we go through this great season of anime. Alright, first up we have Aharen san wa Hakarenai, also known as Aharen is indecipherable, and this is like a spiritual successor of Komi of sorts. It's a relatively cutesy and lighthearted series, and it was a fun show to watch, but I'm not gonna lie, I found myself lagging behind 2-3 to three weeks, cause the gimmick kinda worn out really quick, and I couldn't be bothered to keep watching this every week when there's just so many other shows airing this season on the same day as well. Also, Aharen looks like she's 6 and there's no way I can take the romance seriously between her and Raido. All in all though, still a very relaxing anime to watch. It's alright. 6 out of 10. Ao Ashi is our token sports anime this season, with the story following a kid named Aoi Ashito. Though a tad bit generic this season, I have actually read the manga and I'm caught up with it, so hear me out. This anime will be phenomenal. There's a twist coming in probably an episode or two that will change everything about the anime. So far, we've seen a bit of how academy football works and how that has been kinda enjoyable, but the twist that will come in a few episodes will make all the generic-ish content so far super worth it. This anime will just keep getting better and I can guarantee that. Ao Ashi, though it has a slow start, becomes one of the best sports manga of this current generation and I can't wait to see the anime get to that content that will set Ao Ashi as one of the best out there. So far though, I'm gonna put it at like a decent tier, 6.5 to 7 out of 10, you know, it's alright. Alright, next up is Komi Can't Communicate, which is back into its second season. Uh, you know, it's wholesome as usual. I do have a problem with Komi though. As a manga reader, I've obviously read all this content. The problem I have with Komi right now is that I've seen the gags already, and it just doesn't hit the same after you've experienced a joke once. It gets old fast, and there's some seriously unfunny characters and gags as well, like Yamai for example. And this season has introduced some of my favorite characters like Katai and Onemine, which was nice to see, but I'm hoping they continue the adaptation so that all the good romance stuff that's down the line gets adapted. A very mad season though, like I really thought it was boring. 5 out of 10. Oh god, uh, we got Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie up next, and oh lord, this series has been controversial. People really don't like Izumi. By the books, this adaptation has been kind of below average if I'm going to be honest. And the pacing of the show doesn't really help Izumi either, because it hangs and, you know, it's slow on Izumi's whole bad luck shtick, which really runs out quick in the anime form. So, you know, it's a real boring watch, especially in the middle episodes. It kind of got better near the end because the the material is better at the end of the season. But, you know, I've caught up with the series in the manga, so I know what happens, and, you know, it's decent. And in the anime, it's very disappointing because it's not as easily digestible as the manga. So, yeah, I did end up dropping the series. Uh, you know, I did give it a 5 out of 10 for the anime. And to be honest, the manga is like a 6.5, 7, you know, it's pretty decent. But the anime was a real disappointment for me. Dropped. Alright, 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 stop the music, bro! Yes, this anime opening has been spammed everywhere, and yes, it's cool that they dance to it. Your boy Kong Ming has been one of the most underrated anime this season, and it's a breath of fresh air in, in an anime scene where it's just the same show, copy pasted five times per season. The story follows Kong Ming, the legendary Three Kingdoms strategist, as he gets reverse isekai into modern Japan, where he meets a singer called Eiko and resolves to make her the top singer in the world. With the music scene being hyper competitive, every episode has Kong Ming come up with a genius strategy to forward Eiko's career. It's a thoroughly really enjoyable watch and you know, if you got time you definitely should check this out. It's a really good breath of fresh air in this this anime scene. Uh, I'd give it a probably like a 7.5 out of 10, it's really good so 
a really enjoyable watch. Definitely check it out. All right, boys, time to make the pilgrimage to the honorary trashy harem anime of the season. A couple of cuckoos has been a hilarious mess, and I love it for that. As a manga reader, I was really surprised that it was a two-core anime that's stretching into the summer, so that was a pleasant surprise. With some good animation, this has been a very solid adaptation so far for what it's worth. And it's, you know, it's some good junk food anime, you know what I'm saying? Like, Erica Best Girl, you know, she's my girl, I'm rooting for her. 6 out of 10, it's alright. Go watch it if you're bored, you know what I'm saying? And let's go! We finally got the GOAT, the greatest to ever do it. The zenith of the medium, peak fiction itself. Kaguya-sama Lover's War Season 3 was absolute perfection. Striking an amazing balance between the comedy of the series and the romance, the adaptation of the manga was truly above and beyond the season, even though there were production issues with A1 Studios. They never surprised me with their quality when it comes to Kaguya-sama, and I couldn't be happier with how the season turned out. With the perfect adaptation of the dual confessions in Hoshin Festival for the student council crew, we finally reached the promised land. We reached the promised land, boys. Miyuki's big plan and the kiss were just perfection, with the first ending song in the background to complement the moment. With the new animation decision already confirmed, we'll be seeing season 4 or a movie soon, and I can't wait for it. The best is ahead of us, and I can't wait for what's coming. 10 out of 10, absolute perfection. A perfect season of the greatest rom-com ever written in the anime medium. The next anime I'm going to talk about has been easily the top 3 best anime this aired this season and as a manga reader I've been patiently waiting for the adaptation of Summertime Render for a while now and I couldn't be happier with the adaptation. A suspense horror thriller anime, the show is set on an island where people seem to be mysteriously dying and being replaced by shadows. Our MC Shinpei is tasked with figuring this mystery out and saving the island. To avoid spoilers, I'll stop here. With the author himself working with the studio, OLM have delivered a great adaptation, nailing the tone and the vibe of the manga perfectly while also adding some really nice touches here and there with character reactions and animations too. They've added a nice touch of comedy here and there too, which has been a nice watch, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's been good. The opening and ending songs have been amazing too, and they've always been stuck in my head. Like, the last 12 weeks, it's been stuck in my head. Uh, the... The show will continue into summer, so please watch it if you haven't. I've given it a 9 out of 10. It's on Disney Plus, you know, it's in Disney Plus jail, but definitely try to watch it through other means if necessary. B Tech Overlord, also known as Skeleton Knight in Another World, had a real crazy opening scene in the anime, and a fine first episode, but fell off so hard. By episode 3, I was pretty bored, and I'm dropping it by episode 4. Arc as a protagonist is pretty fun, but the shtick gets real boring since we've seen this concept done before already. By all means, it's a fun anime, but I just don't have the time to stick around to see well-trodden concepts just get covered all over again with new characters. Dropped, I've given it a score of 5 out of 10, it's kinda mid, I'm afraid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry. Next up we got I'm Quitting Hearing, which is a show about, well, the hero quitting hearing. Who would've known? <laughs> it follows our MC Leo as he quits being the hero for the human kingdom and joins the demon lord's army because of reasons unknown. With this interesting premise, most of the season is spent essentially like a rebel society simulator as Leo spends his time meeting and solving the problems of each general in the demon army. This build up results in a great twist near the end but unfortunately it kind of becomes goofy just for some plot convenience because they can't kill off any characters which leaves the show feeling kind of mid after all the stuff we went through. I've given it a 5.5 out of 10, just for what it's worth, and you know, it's a, it's a decent watch. It's just, I wish it could have gotten a sadder ending, just for the quality to be upheld, but you know, it is what it is. It's decent. Love After World Domination is one of the most surprising shows this season, with a really cute and enjoyable cast. I definitely went into this anime thinking it'd be some corny Romeo and Juliet based bullshit, but placed in the Power Ranger setting, but honestly, this is a super solid anime. Probably one of the most overlooked anime this season, this show definitely has a ton to offer, though it can come off a little unfunny at times. The main couple is absolutely adorable, and the Yellow Ranger has been shackles. <coughs> this is just a nice show to watch, and I definitely recommend it if you're in for some cheesy romance. 6.5 out of 10. I'd send for uh, Yellow Ranger any day. 
Well, well, well. We finally stumble upon this little known underground anime with a pink haired child. I'm not sure y'all have heard about this anime at all, you know? Alright, you know what? Who are we kidding? Spy Family has been one of the biggest shows this year, let alone this season of anime. With a really vibrant cast of characters ranging from Lloyd, Anya, and Yor, to Damien, and even the dog Bond, this anime is set in a Cold War aesthetic. You know, it was bound to blow up. With manga sales flying through the roof right now, Spy Family has gotten an amazing adaptation by Studio Wit and Cloverworks. The show is just undebatably great. Everybody loves it. Even your, you can watch it with the family. You know what I'm saying? It's it's you know it's PG as well, and I can't wait for Core Two in fall. It's a solid 8.5 to 9 out of 10. You know, it's one of the best anime this season, easily. When it comes to Giga Chad Big Brain MCs, you often think of Ayana Koji from Classroom of the Elite or Lelouch from Code Geass. Another one of these MCs resides in this relatively underground anime called Tomodachi Game. Think of Squid Game but without debts and just incredibly high stakes through money instead. Rife with a metric ton of twists and deception, this has been an incredibly fun anime to watch weekly, with the manga being an even better experience. Yuichi, our main character, is one of the sickest bastards you'll see in this medium and I love him for it. The ultimate ha, you thought I lost anime, uh, this is some of the best entertainment value per episode we got this season. Easily a 7 out of 10. You should read the manga for sure, because we don't know if we're going to get another season of this. What would you get if you mixed Grand Blue and Kage-sama, but didn't make it as good as either? You guess science fell in love, so I tried to prove it. Now that it's in second season, I can safely say the show is just fine. The character designs and personalities are very generic to say the least, and the show follows two nerds trying to prove that they're in love with each other through scientific methods. It just got some bullshit science in it and some cutesy romance in it, but this season was heavily let down by Kanade. With what can be only described as a pointless and fruitless character arc, she was one of the most frustrating and annoying characters to watch this season, with her arc being trying to just fit in. Now I understand that the whole point of her character arc is to be annoying and frustrating because that's what it's meant to make the audience feel, since it's her internal struggle and she's trying to ignore it, but honestly, just because it fulfills the role that the story wants the audience to experience, doesn't mean it's good. On top of all this, we have a dreadful finale with the nice guy turning out to be some creep in the end after all. It's just bad writing, since she literally stays indecisive and does the same thing for almost 4 episodes in a row. It grinds the pace of this anime to a halt mid-season, and honestly I've said a lot of bad things about this season, but you know, what was a 7 or a 7.5 ended up becoming a 4.5 or a 5 for me. I'm very disappointed in this season, but I wouldn't mind another season just to see what the manga author can come up with. Executioner Way of Life has been one of the most interesting opening episodes this season, with the person who got isekai getting killed by the midpoint of the episode by an assassin. The show follows an assassin trained to kill people who have been isekai and it's a very interesting concept, but to be honest, even though I know this anime has been getting praised for being really good, I haven't gotten back to it since episode 2. I definitely intend on watching it once I'm free, but so I've put it on hold. Uh, I've given it a 6 out of 10 so far. And that's about it. This video has gone way too long, and I really did try to rush it out so soon as possible since spring is ending. Uh, this is kind of an experimental episode because I'm, you know, I'm showing a bit more personality instead of like an essay style content. So, you know, thank you all so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Watch Kage-sama Spy Family and Summertime Rendering. See ya!